Hi guys and welcome back to another Scout the Defender YouTube video and today I'm going to be installing a rear view camera to the back of the Defender. It's something that I've wanted to do since I installed the double din as the camera or the double din unit has functionality to click into rear camera mode. So we're going to be installing or mounting a rear camera to the back of Scout. Now obviously the 110 is a really long vehicle and the visibility is not great, especially with the cargo guard with all of the kind of bits and trinkets on it. So the rear view camera is going to really help with the uh, with the maneuverability and parking of Scout. Now the first thing I thought we would do is walk through the wiring loom itself. Now I've opted for the Rode Angel rear view camera and we'll walk through the uh, wiring harness that we'll, you'll need to connect this to your double din unit and then we'll come back out and we'll install that into Scout. So my wiring loom is split into three sections. I have the camera, I have a power lead, and then I have the video um, output wire. I've gone for the Rode Angel, and I'll leave a link in the description below to the exact camera that I've bought. And on this first section, I have a couple of wires which add additional graphics to the screen. So that's a reverse camera grid. Um, and you can choose whether to turn those on or off by just cutting that wire. You've then got the kind of power pack, which has also the storage for that computer graphic. And then I've got my two wires for video output and power in. Now we have two things that we need to do here now. We need to get power to the camera to turn the camera on and start filming or recording. And we have one, which is the yellow cable for video output. So once we've captured that video, we need to send that to the front of the car into the double din unit. So let's focus on power first. So in your, uh, pack you should have some sort of power lead so I connect the power now these are fed through the defender the power on the other side and now we have the choice of how we're going to power the camera now if you want your camera on all the time so for example if you're towing a lot or for any other particular reason you may want to connect your power to a permanent live source in my case I only want it to come on when I'm reversing so in that case all I'm going to do is connect that to a source that turns on when I go into reverse now naturally that would be the reverse light and again there's multiple ways that you can connect to that rear light. Now one thing you could use is T-taps. Now they clip over the top of the wire in the wiring light and then you'll connect one of these wires into that connection. They're slightly looser, they're slightly bulkier uh, and I'm opting not to use that. The other thing you could do if you're confident your wiring is spliced directly into those wires so cutting a section of the rubber away and connecting each of these, the power and the ground into those wires. Well, the third option, which is what I've done, is buy a secondary piggyback harness. Now the reverse light will have two plugs, one that plugs into the light and then one that plugs into the loom. What this extra piece does is bridge that gap, creates two plugs on either side and will have two additional wires coming off it, which will connect to my power and my earth. And I'll leave in the description a link to the piggyback loom that I've bought. Uh, and you can see on screen just how that will work. So I've got two additional wires coming out of the one plug, which will power my camera on. So that's now giving me power to the camera. We now have to deal with the video that's coming out of the camera. So again, these have been fed through the back of the car. And then we have our new, our third section of wire, which is much longer because this is gonna be running the length of the car to the double din. So if we look at this end first, and on both ends, we will have a video cable and a power cable. So video is really simple. I connect that to the yellow cable and this cable then runs to the front of the car. We then have an additional wire. Well, what we need to do is tell the double din that the camera is now on, so turn the screen on. So as we have connected the power leads to our reverse light, we need to do the same for this wire to tell the, the screen to turn on. So what you should do is connect these two wires first, so the one that's coming directly from the camera into our video lead. So connect those two together. And once there, those two are connected, then I connect them to my additional plug loom, which we showed before. So we'll have two wires, the red, two reds from the video and the camera power connected together, and they will then connect into the rear reverse light. To work out a way of routing this cable down the car, there's multiple ways you can do that. I'll show you in the context of my car when we go to do that. And then at the other end, we have the two final elements of the loom. This is the video. So now we've got the video running from the camera all the way through the car, and we'll plug this into the back of the double din. In the case of my double din, it doesn't have one of these connections, so you have to actually buy a secondary 
uh, connector. This is from Alpine. And again, if you've got an Alpine unit, I'll leave a link in the description below. You'll connect those two together, and then this will plug directly into the back of the double DIN unit. We now have one final red cable to deal with, and this is that signal wire. So we've connected the other end of this loom to the reverse light to tell the double DIN that, hey, the camera's now on, show something on the screen. So that's now why we need to connect this to the back of the double DIN. So in the back of the double DIN, you should have extra wires which are labeled reverse camera. And what we do is just connect those two wires together. So we now have power running from the camera down the lead into the back of the double DIN to say, right, camera's on, now uh, turn the screen on. And that is a quick whistle stop tour of the wiring harness or the wiring loom for the camera. Now we'll go out into the car and see exactly how that works in practice. Right, so the first thing we want to do is to get power to the reverse camera. And as I discussed before, the way I'm gonna do that is via the reverse light. Now there's two ways to get to that power. I've opted to remove the rear light, pull it out, and then get to the wires and then pull them through the body of the car. Alternatively, you could go underneath, but I found that the exhaust and all of that is kind of a bit scruffy, a bit messy, gets in the way. So I found that this is a much neater way of getting to that reverse light and to that power. So what we're gonna do, remove the reverse light, and then we're gonna connect our piggyback loom to those plugs. Now we've got the reverse light out, you can see now that I've connected that piggyback loom to the original light plugs. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can pick up one of these looms. They just make it really easy to tap into the power feed for that reverse light. So what you've got here is the two plugs, one that's bridging the gap, so one that plugs right into the back of the light, one that plugs into the existing loom, and then you've got these additional two wires that are gonna feed the power for our reverse camera. So really nice, neat solution. And what I'll do now is show you where I've routed those cables through. Okay, so as you can see here, this is that new loom, and these two wires run up through the body and enter the back of the car. So hopefully you can see down there, there's a big grommet where the wires come through into the body. So what I've done is actually grab a strong bit of coat hanger wire and feed it down through the grommet. And then I sellotaped those two new wires, those two on the top, to that coat hanger wire and then pulled it up through the body. And they're now coming out of here. So if I, it's quite tricky with one hand, if I grab these. So here you can see, these are the two new wires off that piggyback loom. And these are what are going to provide the power to the reverse camera. So what we're going to do now is get those connected up so you can connect those to the camera uh, and get power feed. Now the other thing to mention is I've had to remove the back rear trim. I'm going to also remove this top trim here because that's where we're going to drill through to mount the camera. Uh, and then you have to just pull back the speaker casing to be able to get to that grommet back there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is drill the hole for the mounting of, of the camera and the routing of the cables. That way then, once they've come through the body, we've got a sense of exactly the length of wire that we need. Line and measure this up now and see where I need to drill a hole for the cables to go through. You can see my reference hole, that'll be the center of the hole that I cut. Uh, so now's the nervous bit of to drill that through and then run the wires through. So that is the scary bit done. And now you can see we've got the hole that we can now feed the wires through. Bit of wiggling and that's now through. And that will mount, the camera will mount just above that hole really neatly. Okay, so it's getting a bit dark now, but hopefully you can see that with that hole, I've cut the grommet so it goes over the wire and then push that into place. That'll be really neat. And then the camera will be mounted up there. It's just a nice, neat, nice, neat, flush job. Let's now connect up the wiring on the other side. Right, so one thing I'd forgotten to show you is I had to take off the uh, the back headliner. That's really easy. It's just got some fur clips and the screws for the handles that keep that in place. So once that's back, obviously I could get access to bring the wires through that hole that I've just drilled. They'll run across this top and then we've got the two wires here. And these are obviously your video and your power. Power's gonna run down that corner to where we've got those two new wires off that piggyback loom. And then power is gonna do the same. It's gonna, one's gonna run down to get power for the video feed. And then the other cable is gonna run down the length of the car into the front of the double din. Uh, so the next thing to do is to connect these two wires up and then we can put the trim back and that's kind of the back section all in place. Also off camera, I've fixed the camera using the uh, sticky pad 
I'm going to try to avoid the screws for now and just see if we can get away with just using that sticky pad. So that's just stuck up in place now, central to the car and looking down, so that's a good fit. So yeah, time to get these cables connected up. Right, so this is the video output lead that's going to connect directly to these wires up here. Now if you remember before, this had just two short uh, red wires because this needs to connect to that uh, back power to tell the camera or the double DIN unit to turn on when the video is on. What I've done is extended that slightly uh, with just another bit of speaker wire. So I've just used a little connector and heat shrink to that so that's nice and kind of clean and tight. Um, that's gonna, this cable then is going to run down to that corner. Right, so now we have those two connected, the uh, power to the camera and the power to that video output feed. I'm now going to crimp those two together into a connector and then we're going to have a connector on the other side to connect to the reverse feeds. So they're really tight and firm in there. And now we're going to connect those to this wire for the reverse camera feed. So hopefully as you can see here now we have our two wires for the um, video output power and the camera power connected into that reverse power that goes runs down through the body and ultimately down to the light. So now I just need to connect the ground or the earth to the other wire that we've run through that piggyback loom, connect those together and then that's all of the power dealt with to the camera then it's a case of running wires to the front of the car. And that's earth wired up too now. So we've got earth going to earth in the loom. We've got the two powers, one from the camera, one from that video output lead connected together and then going to the power in the reverse loom. So that's all of our power now dealt with. And now we've got the, the case of, or the job of running this cable down to the front of the Defender. We've got the cables now running to the front. So you can see down here, I've just got them pulling down here at the moment and I will eventually tuck them back underneath the front headlining and down the uh, pillar. And once they're running down the pillar, they'll then run back through the dash to where I've now got the double DIN unit. Now I've prized the double DIN unit back. So to do that, it's just basically kind of force. You pull from the top first, then run your fingers down the seams and the fascia will pop off. So there we go. So the first connection is that uh, connector for that Alpine unit. So as I said before, the Alpine didn't have a direct video input cable, so I had to buy this adapter. So that is what we will connect our video lead from the back into. And then we've also got this red power lead, which is, as we said before, spliced into the rear, cam uh, rear reverse light. So that is now going to connect to what I found here, which is our uh, reverse camera input. Okay, so very crudely, I've just quickly twisted those two wires together and we've connected that video output lead, which it's not focusing, but hopefully you can see back there. So now I'm going to boot up the car and then flick the system into reverse. So we'll start up the car first. So we've now got double DNL on and now I'm going to select to go into reverse and hopefully the camera's going to come on. Whee! There we go. No one's more surprised than me. We've now got the camera on in reverse. So I'm going to make that fixing more permanent by using a, again another connector and a bit of heat shrink, tidy all that back up behind there, fit the fascia and then we're just going to run these wires down through the pillar. Okay so we've got the wires connected now, we've got the live feed that's running down, down to this orange and white wire here which is the reverse input for the uh, Alpine unit and we've got the video unit connected and then the video output wire runs back through the dash through this slot that's already here and I'm going to run it behind what I've got is a glove, block, glove box lid but you just normally have just a standard kind of capping here. It's going to run around the back and come out the back and run up the A pillar here so it should be really neat and you shouldn't see any of the wires and I should be able to do it. I've already done a bit of a test here. You don't have to remove the headline itself, you can just push it up through that seam and it runs right to the back. I need to sort that bird's nest of wires there. But that is how I've connected it through the dash, so I'm going to tidy up the wiring now and then we'll see how it looks, the final, final output. Right, so we're all installed, all of the double DIN is back in place, we've got the wiring running back, the back of the dash, it runs through the back of this glove box, through that hole, and then runs up through 
the A pillar, close that. Underneath the headliner, it's just tucked in place and then it runs to the back of the truck all the way down that gutter where we've now got the new camera. Uh, that's all in place. And now I'll just show you, I clutch down and then I put it into reverse and then we have camera on. Um, but that was actually a really easy install and I'm really happy with the, uh, the final output. So there you have it guys, hopefully that's given a bit of an insight into how easy it is to install a rear view camera to your Defender. If you enjoyed this video, please drop it a like, leave a comment down below and also be sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come all the way through January and I'll see you in the next video.